Yeah, um, I'm Sib, uh, Chef Sibby, I guess. Um, I'm from Schmackwich. We do um, Wagyu chopped cheese, currently located at the Ali Ali Market in Chelsea on uh, 26th and 11th. Um, yeah, pretty much just started as a pop-up heritage. Um, pretty much just supplied us with everything that we needed from the beginning. And um, we started out in a pandemic, did a bunch of pop-ups throughout the city. And now like we're setting out on a bunch of different ventures, um, you know, catering, traveling around the states um, we've done a couple of like uh, festivals and stuff like that last year went to london brought the chopped cheese out there um about to go out to texas this year florida just like you know pretty much just like trying to spread the food and the culture everywhere okay cool so i'm making a chopped cheese um it's wagyu chopped cheese so if you guys don't know what a chopped cheese is it's a new york classic sandwich this is kind of like tough because like some people say it's like the New York version of a Philly cheesesteak, but if I say that, then I might get canceled. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say that's a New York form of Philly cheesesteak. It's essentially just like, you know, it's a sandwich that represents New York and everything that it is. It's just like, you know, high class meets low brow. You know, you go to your deli, whether it's like the middle of the day or you go after you party and it's just like the perfect kind of combination. So. The traditional uh, makeup of the sandwich is just like a, either a, a roll or a hero. Um, ground beef, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes. Some people do ketchup. I'm not really a big ketchup guy. Mustard, mayo sometimes. Um, and yeah, so that's like the traditional makeup. But like what I decided to do was kind of like flip it on its head a little bit adding better ingredients. Um, so the Heritage Wagyu is like, you know, the star of the show essentially. Sometimes you do like um, Larry's uh, seasoning salt. So right here I have like my own version of Larry's. It's kind of like, you know, like a little Mexican chilies, some oregano, some other things, you know what I mean? Um, we got onions, poblano peppers. Like I'm not really a huge like bell pepper person, but like poblano peppers are amazing, like the flavor. It takes really well to like heat, you know, like gets like nice and smoky, char. Like honestly, I feel like the poblano might be like the star of the show, to be honest. Um, yeah, caramelized onions. Here is um, the roasted tomato aioli. So it's essentially putting together the ketchup, mayo, and mustard all into one. So what I do is just like I get cherry tomatoes, confit them, and like um, with some garlic rosemary, thyme, um, sage, um, and olive oil, strain that out and then blend it down and then like pretty much just like create a mayo from scratch with the eggs, reusing the oil, so on and so forth. So it's like super flavorful, you know, nice. It adds like a, a bit of fat to it, you know, like like creaminess, adds a texture. Before we were using um, um, Bacon League Marmalade from Heritage, but we decided to start doing the Mike's Hot Honey um, we did this during, um, actually during Bodega Day last year with some friends and it was just like a huge hit. It had like a, a nice bit of spiciness to it. We've also been working with them a lot. They've come through to the market, did some recording with us. So we're building a bit of a relationship. And honestly, like um, they said that it's the first time it's ever been used on a chopped cheese. So, you know, first Wagyu chopped cheese, first time Mike's Hot Honey has been used on a chopped cheese. So that's... Um, where it's at. We got some cheese here. Usually it's like American cheese on the um, chopped cheese, but we're using raclette to be a little bit more fancy. Of course, you got the shredders, just straight, you know, iceberg lettuce. You gotta keep it hood. You got the tomatoes, beefsteak tomatoes, same thing. And then there's two different types of bread. Had a little bit of a, de of a debate today of whether it's like, you know, people with <laughs> sensitive gums or <laughs> you know, people that like a nice, like soft sandwich. So we have like this bread right here from Saragina. As you can see, it's like kind of, it's a little crunchy, but you know, the idea is to crunch it a little bit before you bite into it to like, you know, break down the peaks. And then also it's just like a, a ciabatta. So this is from Saragina, which is like the OG bread that we use. Like when I was riding around my bike during COVID, like, you know, I would go to Saragina, throw the baguette in my bag, ride around to my friend's crib, come to Heritage Warehouse, you know, make the chopped cheeses for everybody. But now at Ali Ali, there's a spot called JM Bakery and we get these ciabattas fresh 
daily. It toasts up really nice. It's soft. Very good bread. Um, so I think that that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. So this right here, like, this is not mine, but this griddle right here is what pretty much just like made Schmackwich what it is. You know, we bought one of these, like literally this size. You know, people tell us to come through, like, hey, come and do this party or whatever. We'll just pop up with this, you know, a little, um, a little power strip to make sure it doesn't trip out all the power everywhere. And honestly, we just like trapped off of this for, for a good like year or so, you know, as we started getting some money and like, you know, realizing that we need to expand. We just bought a few more, we got bigger ones. And now, you know, we're at an actual spot where we have like a proper grill, you know, hood system drawers underneath the grill like you know we kind of came up so it's been like you know it's a, it's a story it's a new york story about you know coming up we moved on up to the west side but first things first what i like to do is just get all of these like you know the raw veg cut up, cooked off so i'm gonna drop the onions actually i'm gonna go first with the peppers because this takes a little bit more time we got a little um olive oil here from the um what's the guy's name olive oil jones olive oil jones Yes, yes, where's he at? This guy. This is from, it's Catalan, Catalonia. I just came back from Madrid too, so. Got a little bit of Spanish vibes. It's just like, get it set. Hit that. You want the grill to be like super hot, especially for these um, poblano peppers, because they need a lot of heat to kind of like break down the skin. There's a lot of fibers in the skin and stuff like that. And that's also where the majority of the flavor um, comes from with the poblanos. So we throw these down, add some more oil. But um, yeah, let these guys go, throw some salt on it, of course. You know, get it working. It's like one of my favorite smells, actually. It's like so good, it's like vegetal, you know what I mean? Just like, it's nice. I wish you guys could smell it. You know, waft it out for you guys. Bam, here we go. Let me see, let me move these over a little bit so I can start getting the onions on. All right, while this works, actually I'm gonna add the onions. So while we work in this, I'm gonna cut the tomato. Okay. Let those do its thing. Over here, maybe I'll do the cheese next. Just grate the cheese. This is like, you know, this is another labor of love right here. Just grating the cheese. Yeah, so this is grating the cheese. I get a lot of, you know, I get my arm workout from doing this cheese right here. <laughs> This is a raclette. So it's two different kinds. There's an American raclette, and then there's like a, I think this is Polish? So the Polish one is a little bit more aged. It has a little bit more of like a funky smell to it. Um, but this is like, you know, I guess it's like a fancy equivalent to like American cheese. It's not yellow, but it kind of has like the same kind of like, like texture when it melts, you know, just like, it kind of adds like a bit of like creaminess to it. It keeps the, you know, it holds the Wagyu together a bit, but at the same time, it's not gonna like make it form back into a burger. You know what I mean? It's gonna allow it to kind of just like have its own kind of like flow. You'll see it like once we once we pick it up. Put this over here. Yeah, so pretty much just like, you know, the chopped cheese is just like a classic deli sandwich, like I said before, but for me as a chef, it's like super important to introduce like familiar flavors, but at the same time, like, you know, do it in a way that's, how can I say it? It's like, you know, not like responsible, but like with better ingredients, you know? Like you go to the corner store, you could get like a D-grade burger, you know, you could get just like, you know, whatever, and like get it at, you know, get it that way. But I feel like the, the best part of this is just like, you're kind of like combining the two worlds, you know, I feel like, the better the ingredients are, you know, the better you feel, right? So it's essentially like if you have this really amazing meat, you know, the animal is very happy throughout its life, 
you know, it's not coming from like, you know, a huge farm, you know, they have, I guess even like having like a kind of like an identity, you know, as an animal. And then also just like being cared for, like with like some kind of love, it, 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 um, it definitely like shows through, you know, when you eat it. And like a lot of people, they don't, they do rec recognize that, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want to get a chopped cheese in the middle of the day. And they get it for lunch and they're like, you know, I actually feel good, you know, like it's not something that's going to make me feel heavy. It's not going to like, you know, have me ready to take a nap at my desk, you know. And I feel like that's also like a part of the, the secrets ingredients, so to speak. It's just making sure that, you know, we get the best quality meat as possible, you know. And that's why Heritage, Heritage Foods is the, the place to go. Yeah, so I like to get some char on the peppers and stuff like that. You know, that helps to bring out a lot of the flavor. Like I said before, it helps to break down a lot of the fibers in the skin. And then for the onions, it's good to get a little bit of char, like, you know, that kind of flavor, like a little burnt onion, brings out some of the sweetness, cuts the acidity. And then like, once you put it together with the beef and everything like that, it's just like, makes like a perfect kind of just like situation. So we got this beautiful heritage Wagyu on the plate right here, it's amazing. It's like, honestly, like um, between us, I've tried to use other Wagyu's, but it's has nothing on, <laughs> has nothing on heritage Wagyu. Like honestly, like the blend is amazing. Just like, you know, the flavor, the everything, you know, it's really good. So, you know, I guess a nice little generous amount of salt on there. Gotta get it on the hotter side of the grill. Gotta make sure you get that nice sear so like the juices don't run off too much. Salt the other side. And drop this other burger as well. And while this is working, I'm gonna deal with the bread and the tomatoes and all that stuff. What's been your reaction from the bodega people to your sandwich? Oh, the reaction from the bodega people? From the OGs, you know? <laughs> The OGs? First, they're just like, oh, are you gonna charge so much for chopped cheese? And then, you know, they're like, we're gentrifying the chopped cheese, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, bro, like, me and my two business partners, Jordan and Mitty, like, we're all from New York, number one. So that doesn't make any sense. You know, like, I've like lived, lit literally lived in every single borough. I lived in the Bronx, Manhattan, everywhere. You know what I mean? And then also, it's just like, we're not gentrifying the chopped cheese. We're just like essentially trying to just like present something that's common or like familiar, but in, this, it's the same vessel essentially, but more traditional, I guess, as an homage to like the old school delis. You know, like the old school kind of just like, you know, mom and pops, you have like the Russian daughters and you have like the cats. Like they do everything from scratch, like, you know, they choose the best ingredients, you know, make sure that everything is on point. So it's like, it is an homage to that and just like blending everything together, you know? So it's just like, we want people to be happy with what, what they're eating, but at the same time, we want them to be healthy while they're eating it, right? So it's like, if you're gonna eat a chopped cheese, I would rather eat a Wagyu chopped cheese with like, you know, artisanal cheese and like, you know, fresh peppers and onions, you know, fresh bread that's like, you know, baked daily. You know, cause that's kind of like, you know, it's an homage to what the deli is about, right? Like, you know, back in the day, you would get your bread every day, you get your milk delivered, you get your cheese. Everything is coming directly from a source that you know where it's coming from. Nowadays, it's just like, you don't know where anything is coming from. You know, so for, for me, like when people say that, you know, say whatever they say, there's a lot of love, don't get me wrong. There's a lot more love than hate, but then you have some people that are just like, oh, it's mediocre, it's like, it's a gimmick, blah, 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 but it's not a gimmick. It's really so that we could help the issues of like um, the food deserts in our community, right? So you go to like these, you go to a bodega, every single bodega has the same exact thing, you know? But like, you think about it, like all the things happening in these communities, like, you know, like just like everything, I'm not gonna get into all of it, but like, you know, just like the whole state of things, like if you don't eat a good meal, if you don't have, you know, something healthy to like, you know, to get you through your day, you really don't know how to make the right decision. Like you don't have the, the you know, you don't have like the, the mental facilities to make the right decision. So it's like now if you have something that's nutritious and it's familiar to you, you don't have to feel alienated because that's, that's also another thing that's going on. Like, you know, you go to a fancy restaurant, 
you know, they have like all these different emulsifications and this and that. And it's like, bro, I don't want to deal with all of that. Like, you know, you have the tasting menus and it alienates people. But like, we're essentially bringing that level of quality, but presenting it in a vessel that people could say, you know what, I get this. You know, I understand what it is. I understand like, you know, it's a chopped cheese or it's a bacon, egg and cheese or it's a, you know, turkey sandwich. And it's like, it's very important what we're doing. So this is the part that's like very intricate. So I got to concentrate on the chopper, right? So they say that the chopped cheese has to be chopped to perfection. All right, now we're gonna get some of the spice pack. I like to do this last so that it doesn't like all bleed out like from the fat coming off the meat. That way you get the fullness of the flavor. Get a little bit of heat onto that. So it kind of takes a bit of the sharpness. I'm gonna add the cheese now. Got a hefty amount. Some people think that you gotta put a bunch of cheese on it. It's not too much. You know, I like to do just like a decent amount of cheese and just let the residual heat kind of take care of it. You know, sometimes when it's too much cheese and it's just like, you kind of get lost. Like, you know, you get lost, the meat gets lost, you know, it just becomes like a big cheesy glob. And then what I'll do is pull it and then just let the residual heat do the rest of the work. So next up, what we're gonna do is toast off the bread. For the sake of Patrick, we're gonna use the ciabatta. <laughs> Usually what I like to do is cut the ends off so it's like nice and squared off. That way you get a bite of meat in every single bite, you know? Jeff, I know you know, but you use different breads each time based off where you are and such, but what about just the old Kaiser roll? The, the Kaiser roll is good for certain things. And then also it's just like, the ones that they sell at the deli usually, it's just like air, you know what I mean? It's just like fluff. Like if I could find somebody to like make me like a proper Kaiser roll, that'd be amazing. But this right here is just like, it's beautiful, you know? You can see like everything that happens, like, you know, with the fermentation process, with like, you know, everything like as far as the rise and just like, you know, like it's like done the right way. So I like to put the honey on, like, while it's on the grill, so it kind of like, you know, the heat interacts with the honey. It actually goes into the bread, do a little top and bottom. Here we get the mayo going too. Hefty amount. And then from there, let that toast on the other side real quick. And then scoop this up. <laughs> Looks so good. Smells amazing too. Jeez. All right, let's get these tomatoes on there. These tomatoes are a little thick. Don't judge me. Gotta make sure you salt. Salt the tomato. I learned this from um, Neil Kleinberg. It's like always salt the tomato. Actually, from his son, from Alex, but he said he learned it from his dad. So that's the OG. You know what I mean? Always salt the tomatoes. You get the flavor coming out. You know what I mean? Add our shredders. <laughs> kind of like becomes like, once you mix it with the aioli, you know, it becomes like a little bit of a slaw, you know? Throw a little bit of extra aioli on top, that never hurts. You gotta keep it saucy, you know? Add a little bit of extra swag spice on the top. Yeah, just bring everything together, close it. I always like to give it a nice little press so that everything kind of like comes together, you know? Everything incorporates in the bread, the fat leaks into the bottom. Like once you see the cross section, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Ooh. Yeah, so here we go. Which camera first, you see that? This is beautiful, look. Saucy, juicy, you know what I mean? It's just like, Amazingness. Who's gonna be the taster? I'm gonna taste it. I I remember when you first started making these. Were you doing it out of colony? 
And oh, you, Pips, Pips. And you sent yeah. it to me in an Uber. Yeah, yeah. And my, my roommates and I had it on a cold January night in yeah. 2021. It was COVID times. Ooh. And that thing just warmed my soul. And man, ooh. Mm. It only gets better. Yeah, right? You know, you got to keep it. Yeah, it's so good. You got to keep it evolving all the time. Yeah, like we have the photo of, of of Tim eating it outside of Greenberg Bagel when we did the bagels. It mm -hmm. was it was super like yeah, I love it. Yeah. I like the ciabatta. The ciabatta is good, right? Yes, yeah, like softer. Easier. You know, it still has like a nice crunch to it, but it's not gonna you know hurt hurt the gums of those have, who have sensitive gums. My name is Chef Sib. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. Um, representing Schmackwich. The best sandwich in the city, some people say. Right now, we're at the Ali Ali Market. It's um, in the Starry Lehigh Building, 601 West 26th Street. We're in there with a bunch of different, like, awesome concepts. Um, so you can find us there. Also, we just do a bunch of pop-ups around the city. We're actually planning a bunch of different stuff. Our tour for the summer. We're gonna be going to Texas. We're gonna do the Roberta's 15-year anniversary. So we're bringing back the Roberta's Pizza. Wagyu chopped cheese pizza in the Roberta's backyard, which was like a huge hit. But like, you know, just like taking the culture everywhere and that's the idea, to take the culture everywhere and just spread the love and make sure that the bread is soft. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, appreciate it.